I know, Jenny, and thank you so much. I'm so excited for the interview today. It's really absolutely wonderful that you've been so generous with your time. Thanks so much, Adele. I'm looking forward to um, hopefully giving um, all of your lovely clients some um, um, insight into what it actually is about their hair that they, they need to hear about and how we can make that better for them. Yes, because as we age, our hair changes. And so it's learning from the experts as to what the animals they do because I'll be honest with you, very often we go looking for advice and we can see when the herd who is giving the advice is Becky Dollar Sign. Yeah. And we're actually just looking for the truth, Jane. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm looking at all. I would like to introduce you to our amazing guest today, and that's Jenny Tarrant. She is the principal stylist at Bond Hair Religion here in Canberra. Hi everyone. The multi award winning. Tell us about the awards that are coming up. Oh yes, well um, we are six times finalists for the Australian Hairdressing Industry Creative Awards, which is like our big Oscars. So that's on the 1st of July, so I'm up for ACT New South Wales Hairdresser of the Year. Um, my colourist, our colour director is up for Master Colourist of the Year and a team are up for Team of the Year. Couldn't um, And then three behind the scenes ones as well. Wow, so, such an yeah. achievement. So, Have you been in the business for 21 years? I've been hairdressing 41. I've been, I'm a business owner for 20. Jenny is absolutely committed to delivering excellence in every conceivable way. She says business excellence requires consistency at every level from initial inquiry through to follow up after the appointment. She believes it must be so seamless that this client is transported from busy to blissful within just a few minutes of walking through her door. So important, so very important. You know, so many people don't feel heard and seen these days. And I think on top of doing great care, our job is to give people an amazing experience, them to feel like someone cares and wants to know who they are as a person. You know, it's not about us and, and what we're doing. It's it's more so about you and what's going on in your life and how we can support you and, and make you feel really good about your experience and the time that you're with, with us at Bond. So what we'd like to ask you first of all is tell us your background and how you became a heap piece of it. Okay, so um, at seven, uh, when I was living in Wagga, uh, the lady next door owned the barbershop on the Air Force Base. My dad was in the Air Force. And so at seven, I went in and I was sweeping the floor. Um, and then I knew that I wanted to do hairdressing. Um, so at 14, I started and um, I've worked in, I worked all through my apprenticeship in the same salon from 14. And then I went to another salon um, in Woden. Uh, and then I was headhunting to be the manager of the David Jones salon when I was 21. Um, and then I left that and then I've been um, in like Kingston for the rest of that time. So I've been there for 30 years in the same space. And so, yeah, and tell what they talk. Now, what are the most common issues that your clients come to you with? People want something that's easy, easy to do. They don't need a lot of maintenance. And the difficult thing with that from our perception is, I suppose an analogy that I like to use is if I cut you a piece of white paper and gave it to you and said, okay, for six weeks, you just carry that around. You don't put it you don't look after it or anything you just carry it through everything you do by the time you get that piece of made paper back to me six weeks later it's going to be scrunched up and dirty and marked and and it's a bit like our hair so you know we a lot of us tend to really care for our skin if you know if skin is something that you you're interested in looking after your face but then they don't realize that your hair is is just another part of your body so, you know, we need to wash it and groom it and um, and look after it. And um, that's so vital because it, if our hair is lovely and shiny, um, then our skin looks younger, it looks fresher. If we've got very dry, undone hair, you know, it doesn't matter if you've got the best outfit on, you're not going to look the whole, from, you know, from top to bottom looking look amazing. So I, su I suppose that's one of the biggest misconceptions is that because we cut the ends of your hair that what happens to the roots and what happens to your actual hair for the rest of the week or whatever is comes down to a cup and it doesn't it comes down to how you manage it like if you've got a massive cowlick i can cut the ends of that it's not going to get rid of the cowlick that's that what your hair does so you've got to manage that by blow drying it or doing something like that so that's where you go to your specialist and you say to them okay i want something super easy 
and how do I manage it with this? And one of the things I like to do is ask my clients to actually bring their blow dryer and their brush that they've got at home into the salon. And I just spend five minutes with them and I make them hold it and I show them because it might even just be literally holding your blow dryer over the top and your brush underneath that people trying to do it like this and it's all very awkward and it's something that simple that where they just go oh my god that's so easy so just make sure you know the tools that you've got at home if you're unsure how that's how that's working for you just make sure that you take them to your professional and they can show you what a brilliant idea i thought of that yeah now how often is it safe to color your david um look i mean i would say Six to eight weeks. If you're somebody that, especially if you don't, if you've got grey hair and you don't like seeing the grey hair, um, I would say six to eight weeks doing it. Earlier than that, I just think it's you tend to get overlapping in your colour because the regrowth isn't very large. Right. And it's very hard to stop getting overlapping, which means that you've got what we call virgin hair, so the new hair, and then you've got the coloured hair. And so if you get colour on the virgin hair and then colour on the coloured hair, it ends up going darker. So you get like a band in the mm. hair and so then the hair gets darker and darker. Mm. So I would say every eight weeks, there's so many great um, sprays out there now from your pharmacy. You can get coloured hairspray um, or like dry shampoo spray and you literally just spray it in your part and it helps to cover up the greys you have grown through. So they're awesome. Always have one of those in your kit. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, does colouring or herming damage or thin your hair? It does if if you're doing something like bleaching your hair because basically bleach is like setting a bomb off inside the hair. It basically completely removes all the colour pigment. Um, so bleaching is one of those things that can be very damaging, but that's where it's about going to a good professional who knows the strength of peroxides they put in, which we know doesn't take as much condition out of there. Um, you know, there's a whole... There's a whole list of things, but if you're only redoing your roots with colour and you're not putting it through the ends every time, it's not damaging. Right, but that what I meant was does it damage the thinning from internally? No, no. So you've got to you've got to re- realise that the hair is under the skin. So nothing that you do on top of your head is affecting the hair under the skin. So the thinning will come from all sorts of things. It could be hormonal. It could be um, thyroid. A lot of people don't realise that having a thyroid function test can actually really help them with um, looking at thinning of the hair. Um, that's a sure sign. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of other factors. But if your hair starts thinning, it's from the inside itself in the eye. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. Yep. Are there any treatments you particularly recommend or would buy? No. 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 Uh, there's, there's so many conditioning treatments out there. Um, the one that is outstanding and the one that I will stand behind is a brand called K18. Um, all the other treatment options, they are ex- like external. So basically they coach the outside of the cuticle of the hair. But K18 doesn't give you that, you know, that shiny soft feel, but it's actually penetrating through the cuticle and rebuilding the structure of the cortex, which is where all the chemical change happens. So that's where all the colour happens, the perming happens, all of that. So if, if that's been damaged, the K18 actually goes in and starts to rebuild that from the inside out. So it's probably the truest and most incredible product in 41 years that I've ever seen. I, I don't, I'm not really into things that just make it feel soft. Yeah. For me, if it's only going to make it feel soft, then, you know, it's, it's, it's like skincare. You want to use something that's going to penetrate through that top layer of skin, help give you the results. It may not feel great to begin with. You may shed a little bit of skin, but then after that, it'll have a glow. Yeah. Um, and that's what K18's like. It's not going to make you feel like you're on one of those hair ads, but it is going to be in there absolutely doing the job. So where can you get K18? Um, look, for those, I mean, we sell it in our salon. A lot of professional salons sell it. You can buy it, I think, online. Um, is it a shampoo? What you know? No, it's a treatment. So basically you just shampoo your hair once. Um, then you put a tiny amount in your hand. You rub your hands together until it's really white. Make sure that you've given your hair a tail dry. And then you rub it through the hair. You can comb it through. You leave it for about four minutes so you don't touch it or anything. And then you just blow dry. Okay, ladies. K18. K18. 
It's amazing. How can someone identify the right products for their hair cut? So how do they identify their hair type? And then what products do you? Look, I think this is a tricky one that a lot of people fall into um, issues with. Like I'll have people go, oh, my ends are really dry. So they're using this highly moisturising shampoo and conditioner. But yet they've got massive oil for. So, you know, a lot of people don't realise that shampoo is for the scalp and conditioner is for the ends of the hair. So what, what you do with when you're choosing a shampoo and conditioner, you always choose something for the roots in your shampoo. So if you're oily at the roots, use an oily hair shampoo. If the mid length's in the end, so the mid part of your, so the hair from basically sort of your ear down, if that's damaged, then you use a conditioner for damaged hair. Nice. Yeah. So Dang. a lot of people think if I use an oily shampoo, it'll dry the ends out. No, the shampoo's for the scalp and the first inch of the hair. So if you shampoo your scalp and the first inch of the hair, everything past that first inch is what the conditioner does because it's not getting the moisture. Right. So I just remember the two very separate parts. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Look, how often should we be cutting our hair? Okay, well, I'm a huge believer in um, if you've got long hair, um, I would say three every three months. Um, so a great analogy again, I love using analogies because it makes more sense. If you're walking around... Uh, with a piece of rope and it starts to fray through the ends because you you know you go to the gym and you're taking it to work and you're doing all those things and it starts to fray what do we do to stop a stop a rope fraying we usually burn the ends so that it melts and stops it fraying so that's what a haircut is basically as your hair gets longer it's older so the ends of your hair that are sitting halfway down your back grew out of your scalp probably five or ten years earlier. So you've got to remember everything you've done in that last five or ten years is sitting on the ends of your hair. So if you don't actually get look, just a small amount taken off, ladies, does not mean you have to have inches and inches taken off. I disagree. I'm always about half an inch. We still use inches in hairdressing, which is hilarious. Uh, half an inch every three months, will your hair will grow twice as quick because it won't be breaking up the cuticle. And it'll be so much healthier, a hundred percent guaranteed. Take that advice. What are the main causes of hair loss and thinning? Yeah. So once again, this is all internal. So this is your um, certainly, you know, going and getting blood tests done, making sure that your thyroid function, making sure where you're sitting with your hormones. A lot of those things um, will impact on your hair. Um, also a huge shock, or if you, you know, um, if you're having any trauma, the nervous system will automatically take the protein from your hair, from the follicles inside the scalp and send it to, um, your nervous system to help it. So what happens then is the hair becomes very brittle and breaks off. So, you know, um, it's like when, when you're pregnant, a lot of people don't realise that for the whole nine months you don't shed air. And that's why once the baby's born and we start breastfeeding, people keep saying, oh my God, all my hair's falling out. It's not. It's nine months worth of shedding that you haven't done. It all falls out at once. Incredible. Yeah, because the body is protecting the brain and keeping it very warm and protected because that's the thing that's keeping the baby alive. So hair is incredible, guys. It's amazing. What advice do you give to anyone who's experiencing hair falling out? Um, well, you know, going and seeing medically what's going on. Um, you know, doing some relaxation is a really good technique. But one of the key things is making sure you stimulate the scalp, okay? Um, the old wives tale, wives tale about brushing hair a hundred times and makes your hair grow. That's absolutely true because as you brush the scalp, it feeds the follicle, which makes the hair grow. So the more stimulation you do on your scalp, the more you'll find that your hair will grow and grow thicker and healthier and shinier. Fantastic. Yep. Is thinning hair as we age inevitable? It is, unfortunately. Um, something that I read recently, which I found really interesting, is since women have started to go into the workforce and entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and doing a lot of other things, our stress levels have, have risen. And what they're finding in women is as our stress levels have raised, so is our testosterone. And with the testosterone is coming hair baldness and hair loss. 
So this is the recession area, which is always here as we age, that will always thin. Um, but a lot more women are finding the tops of their hair are getting thinner and thinner. And that's because of the stress and the testosterone that we're releasing into the body. The stress really is paper thin. A hundred, yeah, hundred percent. You know, making sure that you keep your body fit, lots of lovely fresh water, healthy food, that's going to really help your hair as well. Like anything, like your skin, like everything that we do. Um, if we don't look after our inside, then it's very reflective on our outside. Yeah. How do we go grey gracefully? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there's lots and lots of ways. So I'll just point out probably the top couple. Um, we have many clients that have done it. So what we start off with is allowing clients to, um, say, for example, I was talking about your hair. Yeah. So if you said to me, I want to go grey. I'd say, okay, so next time you come in, instead of doing tinting your roots, what we'd do is we'd break it up with some, some of the home colour, but we'd just do foil. So what you start doing is seeing a bit more of your natural grey, but with some browner pieces through it. And then as it starts coming down, then we're still doing foils, but then you start to get used to seeing a little bit of your natural hair. And then let's get slowly, bring the length up as the foils come down, and then they'll meet. And then... You know, it's so easy then to grow out the foils if you want to be natural. But it's a beautiful, soft, gentle way. And it's a slow way. So people around you start getting used to seeing it. And it's not like you're going from black to blonde. So you know. how long does that process really take? Depending on the length of your hair. So if some of my clients have got short hair, for example, it's probably three to four haircuts. If you've got longer hair, of course, it's a lot longer. Okay. Yep. Yep. What advice do you give for someone dealing with dandruff or dry scalp? Okay, so one of the things I just want to tell you is dandruff is a product branding name. The only people with true dandruff are usually people who are homeless, who live on the street, who are unable to cleanse their hair um, because dandruff is literally like we shed skin all day. Um, it's the same with our scalp, but when you get such an oil build up in the hair that quite dirty then the skin actually clings and that's what dandruff is okay so 90 percent of people who are walking around thinking they've got dandruff it's usually psoriasis or dermatitis oh, okay wow. or they're having a reaction to products that they're putting on their scalp okay yeah, so that's really important to know guys that it's usually some sort of skin irritation um that is causing the flakiness yep okay. so definitely you know, um, consulting with the professional and using one of the, um, like a scalp shampoo that you can get from a hair salon because it won't have a lot of sulfates and parabens and all the things that can actually t irritate the skin. If that doesn't work, then it would be going to a dermatologist and getting that in the that proper way. Well, ladies, don't yep. forget that. Now yep. we want to know how often should we be washing our hair? Okay, again, this is really up to the individual. I wash my hair every day. Um, as you can see, it's very short and it's bleached. But for me, I just wash it every day. If you use shampoo and you use conditioner, then you're fine. So if you want to wash it every day, as long as you make sure that you're using conditioner, then that's fine too. But if you want to do it once a week, that's great too. Like there is no, you know, you'll hear a lot of hairdressers say, oh, no, you can't wash your hair every day. You know. I don't think there's a can't anything. I think as long as what you're taking out, you're putting back with conditioner, then, you know, it. So, we're well, washing your hair every day, correct? Oily hair. So, you know, depending on what what shampoos you're using, um, you know, I understand that um, we're, in a, we're in tough financial times, but I think if you can invest in a good oily hair shampoo from a hairdressing salon, you, instead of using a handful of shampoo, um, you use literally a five cent piece. Because again, remember, it doesn't matter if there's no shampoo through the end of your hair, because as you rinse it out, the shampoo will take any dirt out through the ends of the hair. It's the scalp you're wanting to wash. Okay. So you only need a tiny bit. Um, so you actually end up paying probably about the same. It's buying a cheaper one that's not doing the job as well to buying one bottle. You probably go through three bottles to the one bottle and it yeah, it works out financially the same. So do you recommend any particular brand for shampoo? No. no. I mean, I, of course, I'm going to say the ones that we sell in the hair salon, um, just because they're, they're very specialised. Um, but look, you know, at the end of the day, depending on what your circumstances are, 
And if it's if you can't spend, you know, twenty five, thirty dollars on a shampoo, then you're better off getting something that's for the oily hair from the chemist or any of those places. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. make sure you use for oily hair so that every time you're using it it's helping to remove the oil. Yeah. Can you recommend any supplements? Um, yes. Hair, skin and nail tablets. They're from the pharmacy, health food shops. Uh, they have a natural silica, which helps to strengthen the hair internally. So you'll find that, you know, um, your nail, your fingernails and your hair are made out of exactly the same product. They're both made out of hard keratin. So, you know, some people get so worried about being brutal with the hair when you think about what you do to your fingernails, made out of the same product. So uh, that's why it can actually be put under quite a lot of stress. So, um, you know, making sure that you use a natural silica that then in the body helps to strengthen and make those things much stronger. So you'll find that your skin will be more radiant, your nails will be much stronger and less brittle, and so will your hair. So just in the old hair, skin and nail tablets, pharmacies or health food shops. Fantastic. Yep. Goodbye. How can a person determine the best hairstyle for their face and shape? Okay. So a lot of this... Um, you know, I think, unfortunately, these days, a lot of our young hairdressers aren't being taught this. Okay. And one of the things that I make sure I do is teach it in my salon because, as we know with clothing, as we know with makeup, all of those things that a lot of the time when we're, when we're you know, putting highlights in the, our makeup or doing something like that, it's about pretending that you've got, like, cheekbones. Yeah. So a haircut's doing the same thing. So, say for example, with my face, as you can see, it's quite round. So, one of the key things for a round face normally um, is to have some height or some length. Because yeah. as soon as you put height, so, you know, blow dry, get a bit of fullness in the top or have some length around the face, it helps to lengthen the face. Yeah. If you've got a very long face, then what you're trying to do is a lot of the time you're trying to build width. So, that's where having long hair or lots of height is only going to make it look way longer. So it's all about having the width for that. So it's about creating, it doesn't mean it needs to be a bulb, but it's about creating the volume through the sides. So when somebody looks at you, they're seeing this width and not the length. Yeah. The same with all of those things. That's how, you know, the best, the best clothing for your body shape, you know, if you've got no waist, how to make a waist. I mean, all those lovely things that you do, Adele, um, it's the same in hair. It's about creating the illusion. It may not be there. And that's where it's important to go to a great professional and have a good shape done. Um, you know, a lot of the time I'll say to my clients, they'll bring me photos and please, everybody, hairdressers love photos. I don't know where this came from that we don't like seeing pictures. I love it because then I understand where you're at in your mind. So then I can, because you're not professional. So trying to speak to me about hair. It's very difficult. So I always say to clients, get a little selection of photos and then I can see where you're going. Then I'll take those pictures and look at you and decide if that's going to work with your hair, tell you how much effort has to go in and if that's going to work with your face shape. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Final one. Do you have any general advice for maintaining hair health during different seasons? So as with skincare, um, you know, a lot of people think that if they find a shampoo... They go, oh, I love his shampoo and love it. And then they go, oh, it just doesn't, it's not doing the same thing. So I say to my clients, please don't just go and grab the same thing that you've always had. Let me diagnose, let me look at your hair because what it was last season will be different now. A lot of the time in winter, a lot of our heating's now coming from the ceiling. So what that actually does is can dry out the hair. So I would then recommend something different to what I might recommend in fortune or spring or so, you know, like with skin care, you really have to diagnose what's happening yeah. at that time yeah. and then get the right product yeah. for it. I think that's the key. You know, don't think because you've always used that exact one that that's the one you've got to use. It's different every time. And that's why that's the best thing about walking into a salon and asking somebody to have a look at your hair and tell you what it is best that you can use. Um, you know, I've had many people come in and do that. And, I, you know, they'll say, oh, look, I'm just going to go and buy the brand that I normally... And I'm totally fine with that because I would prefer that they use the right level of product um, than bought it from me. But at least they're going to get the results that they need. Yeah, 100%. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your 
sharing all your wealth of knowledge. <laughs> We're so grateful for you and your time. Yeah, oh, no problem. And, you know, I'm more than happy, you know, if somebody wants to contact me via email to ask me any questions or anything, just send it to Jenny, J-E-N-N-I, Tarrant, T-A-R-R-A-N-T, at gmail.com. And I'm happy to answer your questions, ladies, because I know that it's a really tricky situation. And, you know, I don't think a lot of hairdressers are great communicators. And, and, you know, for me, I just want people to be happy in themselves and feel really good about who they are. And we all deserve a little bit of professional help in those areas. Yeah. So thanks so much, Thank Adele. You. I'll it's share been... that email address. And you can also put comments at the bottom. We can, Jenny can respond to you there. Yeah, fantastic. You. So happy to help you guys. See you. Thanks, Bye. Adele.